really sick right now, by the way. Have you I looked know. at his face first? Yeah, yeah he's really sick. He's like, fucked. Dying sick? sick? Like, really, like, really bad, like, phlegm and going. Oh. It's really bad. Oh, is he like, <laughs> check out my phlegm <laughs> He's just, like, <laughs> leaking out of everyone. <laughs> he's just, <laughs> I, I need to leak my face. It out. First, let me take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that selfie? song. And I haven't even heard it yet. What? You have, if you know that line. <laughs> this is song. Vines. Vines, oh. <sighs> vines, song. Are, let's talk about Vines, there we go. Let's go on about Vines for 45 let's minutes. Let's fucking go on. But first, about. let me take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> As is a running gag. Yo, everybody. This is the Rapscallion Scatcast. Come to you with fecal matter through the internet. <laughs> This is episode extra six. Stinky. Episode six. It's extra stinky. Episode six. I think we had a little bit of a hiatus. Yeah, because we're fat and lazy, and we have other things to do in life. Yeah. That's the best. And because you people don't listen enough. <laughs> Never again. It's not appreciated. Never again. No, we're back. Uh, listen to our podcast. You can check out our Facebook stuff and all that. Who cares? Uh, so you want to jump into it, you guys? What do you think? I the other day while we're talking about feces, just because mm. I didn't well, yeah, run for like this. two days straight. Whoa! And then I did, and it was so good. <laughs> That's all I got. Did you feel like a new man? Yeah, it was. It's kind of pooper is really dense, and it mm-hmm. just like jettisons out and makes a big splash, like in that the movie, the um, like in the movie Splash. No, where the meteor hits the earth and with Morgan Freeman, Armageddon, um, Deep Impact, Deep Impact, yeah, yeah, like when the meteor goes in the ocean, <laughs> that was the toilet. You know, Neil deGrasse like Tyson it. recently said the Deep Impact is like the most scientifically accurate yeah. movie that's out there. Man, I saw a video. Are you shitting me? No, he said it's everything in there is totally accurate. Deep Impact, really? Yeah, yeah. it's a good movie, man. It's scary too, but there's yeah, a video on YouTube mm-hmm. of like the same thing of the scenario of a meteor hitting the Earth, and it's like Japanese or something. It's so much worse because they go into like because there's the tentacle burning rain. rain. No, it's not anything personal. It's just yeah, like yeah. A, almost a robotic voice saying, "18 hours after the meteor hits." Everyone will be melted alive. <laughs> and it goes on like that for like an hour, just saying the terrible, Play by terrible. play of yeah. the fall of mankind. This will be very similar to Hell on Earth. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. <laughs> just so impassionate about the destruction of mankind and, you know, <laughs> life on Earth no longer existing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just picture a guy from like the 30s on a radio smoking a cigarette wearing a suit just talking about it like, yeah, well, we're fucked. He's very melancholy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. morose and you, ennui. You know who else is ennui? <laughs> Me! When I drink my drink that I drink every episode. Yeah. <laughs> How's that for a, a segue? Put that in your milk. <laughs> Today, <laughs> for this episode what of the, the podcast... Fuck? Shut up. For this episode of the podcast, I'll be drinking Crown Royal. Uh, that's not very exciting. It's yeah, classic Crown Royal. I, you know, I figure we're on a hiatus. Let's just take it easy. <laughs> Enough of the weird stuff. We need to go mainstream. But we also we need to get that money. Shock Top. Oh, yeah. And then there's also Belgian Shock Top. Meat. Orange flavored. <laughs> yeah. And Coriander. Which, that was the name of the character... Hunger Games? Did Hunger Games have something named Coriander? It sounds like something some like... fiction I saw had a character named Coriander. I can't remember what it was. And they nicknamed her Cory. And I can't fucking Man, it's gonna be something super embarrassing. Like someone's gonna like Google this and it's gonna be like this character Coriander from the Care Bears Adventures series. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh Cory what? I A N D E R. Exactly how it sounds. No, there's no, an A not Coriander. Ah, good. You'll never. <laughs> I hate you. There you go. Probably There's pretty only close. One R. R. Uh, um, you guys can be talking while I'm doing this. Do, 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 okay. Do. All right. So, Eric, so, um, what do you we're, think? We're on the topic of yeah. some maybe. I think it might mm. be. Dungeons and Dragons? I don't know. It kind of looks like. I don't know. 
So anyway, we're all around the Anyhow, topic of topics. Hunger Games is very similar to another series, which is the Harry Pie Head. Oh, I thought you were going to say Battle Royale, but okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you know, I like watching children die, so all of these as series we are pretty do. good. I'm hoping there's more death in Harry Potter as I go on. I've never seen any of the movies, but I'm going to... There's more death. I figured as much. <laughs> I'm going to London in the summer... And for my research on the culture, I'm trying to watch all the Harry Potter movies. Because that adds really the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm going to go and call everybody muggles. And... He's going to ask for butterbeer everywhere, and then he'll oh, be like, yeah. Oh, fuck off and the edge of my and... dick, you can <laughs> Oh, you having the giggles? Wallaby dink. <laughs> I'll bash your head in a swiss of my mom. I swear my fucking mom. Anywho, I got all the movies. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have a marathon and watch all these overnight. <laughs> Dude, each one is like three hours. <laughs> yeah, I realized that. But besides that, the first one was so boring, man. I couldn't get through it. I had to watch um, it in like half you, hour. You, you're going to London and you want to be up to date with their uh, the, lingo? It, it's a joke, man. But what I'm <laughs> saying is, yeah. you, you, yeah. you want to go with, with, I don't even I don't even need to say it. You already know what I'm going to say. I know. <laughs> uh, watch, uh, Doctor. No, Ooh. no, no. There he is. The other... no, Misfits? There, down. Don't Don't you know Abby. Yeah, that's that's not Abby. a modern series. That's set in like World War II, <laughs> motherfucker. I'll watch the kids. I'm pretty speech. sure they there haven't technologically advanced since then, Andy. <laughs> Nothing has changed. They're still fighting Nazis. It is London after all. <laughs> I watched Doctor uh, Who, but only like the 60s one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so once again, <laughs> it'll be the same thing. Uh, <sighs> it's about to see, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <sighs> Uh, well, speaking of modern stuff, Andy, you said you had something about the Xbox One? Yeah. All right. So I got this new job outside of this, which, uh, whatever. But I got this new thing, and I got money. Wait, right? this is the job? They pay you? <laughs> I am the only one. It's all to me through a very complicated series of uh, direct deposits. <laughs> money laundering. Uh, it's anyway. That, it's that Prince from Nigeria. I yep. knew it. <laughs> Prince in Bluetooth something. Anyway, uh, the ex- I thought about maybe, hey, I like Killer Instinct, I think, but I've never played it. So I should maybe give this a try if I want to think about ever getting an Xbox One primarily for Killer Instinct. So I go into Best Buy, right? And I try out PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Vita, all this stuff. And I found, to my great surprise... The Xbox One is the best controller I've held in years. I don't know what they did. It's like perfectly balanced. It's grippy, but not grippy. It's uh, weighted perfectly. The thumbsticks feel good. Like, it's... Oh, I can't even describe it. See, what it is is Microsoft actually releases a chemical component through the joysticks. <laughs> They're so endorphins. As, as you play it, it, it slowly brainwashes you into thinking Microsoft is better. Well, I had an erection after about 30 seconds of pulling it. That's, that's actually a really and I was like, common side ah. effect. And I wasn't even playing Dead or Alive is a weird thing. <laughs> that's uh, it's funny because it's true. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, the Xbox One controller is really, 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 really good. I don't know what... And the weird thing is, I went over a PS4 controller because everyone says, oh, that one's better than the PS3 controller. Nope. I wouldn't say it's a case. It doesn't... There's something off with it to me, man. Like, the back triggers, you know, they kind of fold inward on the PS3. On you're, the PS4, mo- they're kind of like just buttons. And I'm mm. used to them folding back now. It's the weirdest thing. Oop. So, the controller is grippy, but not grippy. It's not bland. <laughs> it's rustic. So anyway, the weird thing is, like, I kind of think about maybe getting an Xbox One, but only because it has a good controller. But could I could just use it for the PC. I was like, could you yeah. just get the yeah. controller and use it for the computer? Mm-hmm. Well, they, they haven't released drivers for it yet, though. I guess in sometime in this year, they're going to release drivers so you can use them on PC, but they are dragging dragon ass. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. They're dragon ass? They got dragon asses. Dragons. Dragon you. That... Game of Thrones is coming back soon, man. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. a segue. Uh, Dragon. <laughs> wow, we're really, really pulling those strings here. It's fine. It's totally fine. There's Game of Thrones is coming back 
pretty soon. All and all sorts of crazy stuff. Going all sorts on. of crazy stuff that they're dragging Elysian. in from a dance with dragons. Man, not only the show, but like all this news about the books and the, yeah. Just give, give us a quick rundown. The metadata. All right, so George R. R. Martin or somebody reports that the next couple books in the series are going to be like almost two thousand pages each. Mm-hmm. The showrunners say they only want seven seasons. Mm-hmm. Unless execs want more, which will be eight or nine seasons. I said, don't they normally do a season per book? That's the thing. They're Not ca- anymore. They're, doing, they're going through it faster and faster and faster every season. So, Which George R. R. Martin has said, it's frightening how close they're getting now, and Amir going to have to find a way to stall them or something. Yeah. Which at no point do they say, I guess I'll just write the books. <laughs> <laughs> and also they say they... There is something I heard about them wanting to end it all with a huge ass movie. Mm-hmm. I heard about that about Game of Thrones becoming a movie. Yeah. Yep. I don't huh. know because if they end it with seven seasons, that's definitely I don't think going to be the whole series. Because yeah, yeah, they're on potentially what, f- four or five, no, four, five, four, no five, right? I'm pretty five. sure it's five. I'm pretty sure this will be season five. I think it will. No, actually, it might be four, because I remember we were talking this season, like, man, the fourth book was not the best one. And this season is going to be, yeah, I'm almost sure it's four seasons now. Yeah, yep, going season fourth. four. And I remember thinking, like, Ooh. man, A Storm, what was the fourth one? Feast for Crows? Feast for yeah. Crows is widely regarded as not the best of the books. Probably because it's right? slower and has not as much action and stuff, but it definitely has its... Very cognitive and mental. And it sets up for a lot of things. What the hell? Maybe you should pay attention to the discussion. Yeah. I am paying attention. I'm looking up Game of Thrones stuff. <sighs> Staring at pictures of Amelia Clark. That's really <laughs> productive. <laughs> I think our fans would agree. Yeah, but they can't. Like, here, you looking at. Well, I guess they can hear you clicking. They can feel the essence. Yeah, feel the essence of Tone's erection well, growing I'll... for Amelia Clark. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're impatient. You weren't. You, you didn't let me give it proper timing for the moaning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mike, we're sitting here, and suddenly you just go. Arr. His Andy spills uh, beer uh, all over himself. My beer. The shock top oh. is just too good. Yeah, it's actually not bad. Now you guys smell like orange peels and coriander and bread. Oh, great, great. That's just what I wanted. Fine, <laughs> fantastic. Anyway. Game of Thrones, yeah. So they're saying now this new season may get into some of the stuff, which you can, if you know the books, you can see it from the trailer right away. They're mm-hmm. getting into some stuff in the fifth book now, which I kind of figured this might be a problem with the show. The books, there are certain books that take place essentially at the same time, or they have events happen at the same time with different characters. The format of the show is not conducive for that. So they're now it's kind of taking conducive. stuff, they're taking stuff from multiple books and putting it into the same season. And I think that's going to be more and more of a problem going forward. Now, as much as I hate when shows do this, could they do flashback episodes where they do flashbacks to kind of fill in the gaps of oh, stuff yeah. they missed? Oh, yeah. yeah. See, they could, but here's... The thing with Game of Thrones a show compared to the book, and I'm not knocking TV audiences by saying this, but there are definitely some things where they either dumbed it down, spelled things out for people explicitly, or made stuff a lot less subtle. For example, uh, Renly, in the books, it was kind of hinted at that he was homosexual, right? In the show, flat-out gay sex. Like, that's, they could not spell it out any more clearly with Renly. Even Loras, too. Like, in the books, yeah, he's yeah. like, actually, like, really heartbroken after Renly dies. And mm-hmm. I have spoilers. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, after you say <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Everybody should know this shit. You really, if you're listening to us, you should already be caught up to Game of Thrones. And besides, that's like, what, season two? Two, yeah. Season two. Well, now they know. If they're... <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Uh, and then the show is like, right after he dies, he's just hitting on every dude you can see. Yeah. Just like, remember, this guy's gay. Don't forget, Sir Loris is gay. And it's like, well, Whatever. Which is fine. I'm not saying there's anything against him being homosexual. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's, everything that was like hinted at in the books is right there on the it's show. It's almost like yeah. someone had their creative liberties and they just did their weird movie to or book to movie adaptation. You know, just making references to our previous episodes. Yeah. 
The did we talk about creative? <laughs> yeah, we did an episode <laughs> on creative liberties many years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. We check it out on YouTube. Basically, we Maybe. record an episode and then I completely forget we ever did it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's just gone forever. But going you back know. to Game of Thrones, I think their uh, simplification works well for them because they can yeah. go straight back to the flashbacks and say, like, this is exactly how it happened. Hmm. Like the thing with the tower that isn't spoiling anything, the battle at the fork thingamabob, the rise of Robert Baratheon, uh, R plus... <laughs> L equals J. Oh, yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I don't see them doing flashbacks is my only thing. No. Well, because they, they like, haven't done any flashbacks that I can recall throughout the entire season. But they series. could do, like, a prequel season, like, Star oh, yeah, Kids yeah, yeah. or something like that. Heck, they've got the Dunkin' Egg books they could do. Yeah, I actually would really, really like them to do a Dunkin' Egg season, at least one, because I haven't read any of Dunkin' Egg, and yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool. Which, for anybody who's wondering, is a book about... Uh, Aegon Targaryen and Duncan something or other. Yeah. If he's from another family, mm-hmm. the big, big family series. That's all you need to know. <laughs> uh huh. Mm-hmm. I should have really read those books because I'm yep. in the dark. You really should have. They're really great. I'll wait for the TV show to come it's, out. it's not too late. Speaking of reading books, uh, at my new job, I have no time because I'm working a lot. And I've been reading through the Dark Tower books. And I've been flying through them shits. I'm on book seven now, right? Seven. I had two fingers over here. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> seven books. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Um, and it's a very weird series that they're allegedly turning into a TV series on Ooh. HBO at some point. Um, but it's a we- like a weird mix of Western stuff, post-apocalyptic stuff that also draws bits from Stephen King's other books. Like there's a specific character that comes in later who's from one of his other books that was also adapted into a film. And one character in the most recent book that I'm almost sure is either it or a similar creature to the main creature in it. And it's really odd. Oh, and another weird thing with the books is that, a uh, spoiler, I guess, uh, who cares? Stephen King writes himself in as a character in the book. It's mm-hmm. not like Stephen, it's literally Stephen King. Like, the characters meet up with Stephen King. And he describes himself, it's funny, because in points he describes himself as like, Stephen King was a cool guy, and you're like, <laughs> But then, to be fair, he also says he was kind of an asshole, so I guess he kind of balances it out. Uh, but it's That is so egotistic. It's hilarious. Well, it's weird, because a lot of the series is about like what it means to be a creator, and the process of creation and stuff, which it does get a little egotistical, because he says at one point, like, being a creative person is like tapping into the will of God, basically. <laughs> and I don't know. But My, overall, it's a pr- pretty good series. <clears throat> I mean, it's very unique. I'll say that much. Well, you, you have to remember that it is, after all, Stephen King. Mm-hmm. I mean, the dude, he's weird. Mm-hmm. Not, not, not that it's a bad thing. It's just... He's a lot less weird than some other authors, though. Yeah, Chuck it, Palahniuk, goddamn. I love Chuck Palahniuk, but holy crap. I don't know who that is. It's Fight, Fight Club, Club Joke. Oh. Joke. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's not that's not like weird. Like that's just that's more gritty, in my opinion. Have you read his book? <laughs> I haven't. Well, read I books. don't know. No, no. See, I have that a, being I'm said, thinking... you may still be onto something because he Stephen King hmm. is just he has that like almost supernatural weird. Yeah. Speaking I mean, of, go, go on. He's been writing forever. Yeah. Well, that, that's a funny thing. The very first Dark Tower book he wrote when he was, like, really, really young. Yeah. So it went from, like, the very start of his writing career, pretty much, to 2001 or something. Like, I, intermittently in between the books. There's been, like, huge gaps. The, hmm. Man. Uh, the guy who wrote Ulysses. I completely forgot his name. Ah, uh, Shoot. Ah, shoot. Anywho, I think it was him. He took like 20 years to write that book. And they say if it took someone 20 years to write it, it should take you 20 years to read it. Mm. Authors want you to read slow as fuck. 
Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly. So, I mean, huh. it's like when you spend that much of your life writing something, mm-hmm. not even one thing, but like a whole uh, myriad of works like Stephen King, how can you not get egotistical a little bit? Yeah, well, True. plus he made a lot of money and had a career yeah. off of it. Uh, yeah, I didn't get I mean, it. He's like, been very successful at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And even saying, like, the tapping into the God thing, that's, I don't know, it seems like more of a celebration of literature as a whole than well, there, itself. Now, that definitely is a major theme in the book. Yeah. Um, because the character, the main character, Roland, who's like a mixture of um, uh, King Arthur and Ooh. Clint Eastwood's Man With No Name, uh, it was actually based off of a poem called uh, Roland the Gunslinger Comes or something like that by Emily Browning about this guy seeking after this dark tower and there's a whole thing there. Uh, so there actually are, actually there's several lit- other literary references throughout the series, a lot of which I'm probably not even that catching. Um, so yeah. he's kind of appreciating the classics by making yeah, kinda. references in a... Again, I haven't finished the book. I'm really close. I'm like two, three hundred pages away from finishing book number seven. Now they release an eighth book, but it's kind of like extra stories, like you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm almost done. And everyone says, probably the next time we do a podcast, I'll bring this up. Everyone says with the Dark Tower series that the ending uh, breaks a lot of people. Like they have this thing, they have the ending, I guess, and then they have this thing right after it says warning if you read this it's gonna ruin a lot of stuff you can either stop here and enjoy the ending or keep going and see what's behind the veil and i'm like hmm Mm. like and i'm not sure if that sounds kind of gimmicky or what exactly it's gonna entail but i guess there's this thing like at the very end that may ruin the whole series for me allegedly (laughs) Hmm. stephen king wakes up from a dream (laughs) (laughs) Man, it, you're telling oh, me this didn't be. really happen? <laughs> it, oh, I, it could I be. It honestly could be with the way the series is. Really going going what? back to how books become movies or TV shows and how they change. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of books by Stephen King I haven't read, and obviously I've seen most of his movies. Yeah, they're. I re- <laughs> yeah, I recently saw Bag of Bones, the two part. Mini oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, it's good. Actually, uh, I don't know if it's good. I just know it's a thing. Anyway, uh, what I'm saying is a lot I, of the stuff gets loosely adapted. Dude. Is a good way to put that it. That movie's ending. I can understand as a book. I can I can picture how it was written. Hmm. But as a movie, man, that ending was so cheesy and, like, the poor CGI and just... Hmm. It was bad. I mean, there's a couple famous instances, like in Cujo, in the book, the kid is killed by the dog, in the movie, he survives. Uh, Carrie, I guess, is pretty different. I guess the Carrie remake is a little closer. Uh, the, one of the more famous ones, of course, being The Shining, <laughs> being way, 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 way different. Uh, the ending wasn't as affected as much as other stories. I mean, it, it ends up the same, basically. Mm-hmm. In The Shining, but the way they get there and the way things transpire and even just the, the essence of the evil in the hotel yeah. is entirely different in the book than it is in the movie. Well, the movie, I remember Stanley Kubrick wanted to kind of make a statement about like imperialism yeah. and all stuff. And in the books, it was about his own struggle with alcoholism yeah. and all this. Uh, what's another one? The Mist, I remember, I could be totally incorrect, but I remember reading something on The Mist... That said that the ending that I personally love, and a lot of people fucking hated, yeah, and I know we it. all enjoy it, The Mist, um, I guess it had a happier ending in yeah. the book. And the ending they were putting in the film was an idea by Frank Darabont, uh, interestingly enough. And he went to Stephen King and said, like, hey, I want us to have, like, really, really tragic ending, spoilers. And Stephen King was like, yeah, it's better than the one I had. <laughs> like, yeah. So, wait, you know. the ending of The Mist... Was the director's idea. Really? That was different. Creative liberty in itself. Yep. And that ending, again, I thought was awesome, even yeah. though... That's the one... We are very much in the minority, because I think we are seriously the only people who ever talked about the film. Number one, not a lot of people saw the film. No. Number two, most of the people who saw it hated that ending. I know. My wife hated, hated that movie. Something about yeah. this culture, man. They can't handle tragedy. Yeah. My wife hated it, because she just thought the whole movie was dumb. No. I f- I feel that's like the one with 
at the very end, it's Thomas Jane, right? Is that yeah. the mm-hmm. one? Yeah, dude, that ending was... <laughs> yeah, that was... It's wow. tragic, but it's great. Yeah. It's like some It's classic... poetic. Yeah, yeah, it's like a classic Greek tragedy or something. Yeah. Breaking Bad, didn't it? <laughs> I stopped myself. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, Everyone should have seen Breaking Bad. The whole series is up on Netflix. If you haven't seen Breaking Bad, just go go see it. I'll just There's say no that was equally poetic. Yes. Yeah. I had, a, I had a coworker who he was behind like three or four episodes after the finale aired. Yeah. And he's telling everybody, he's like, I don't want to hear it. And everyone was keeping it cool. <laughs> One guy came in work late. Oh my god, you guys see the finale? <laughs> Ruined the whole episode for him. And he just put his fist right down his throat. <laughs> just, oh! It's like that scene in Glorious Bastards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, you know. it was uh, quite entertaining. <laughs> uh, <sighs> you know, what else is Awkward quite entertaining? <laughs> Again, I have no time. So basically my life now is devoted to get home, watch two best friends play and whatever else on YouTube for like an hour, and then I watch Japanese animes like a teenage boy. <laughs> That's all I fucking do now. <laughs> I'm watching Kill Kill like crazy and Gurren Lagan. Gurren Lagan? Whatever. I don't know. Stupid Kill- American can't pronounce it right. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a weeaboo yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Someday I will be. No, Kill a Kill is super weird because a lot of the plot revolves around gratuitous nudity. But it's not... Actually, it's not gratuitous because a lot of the plot... I kid you not. A whole... Uh, spoilers, I guess. A lot of the plot is about uh, this alien race that's made out of threads, right? They control clothing. And there is a counter group. This whole thing is tongue-in-cheek, by the way. It's not meant to be super serious. Let me say that for a song. <laughs> oh, I caught that already. <laughs> There's a group that wants to stop them that's, that's called Nudist Beach. Not Nude Beach, but Nudist Beach that is against wearing clothing because the clothing is out to get us, man. Which, ironically, is aliens. Yeah, the clothing is an alien race. Spoilers, I guess. But it's really odd because they have a lot of like hyper-sexualized stuff, uh, but it's to service the plot. And that's the weird thing about it. So, yeah. like, it actually has a point, and that so the is... Base is okay. I'm not even going to touch that one. Do it. Do touch it. it all over. But is there? I ain't a, scared. A moral or a message, or is it just? There's, the... there's a couple things. Uh, as long as it's about self confidence and accepting yourself as you are, and uh, not being afraid it, it to like love people. The creator just wanted a reason to make everyone fucking naked. Yeah. See, but that's the thing. They're not. That, they're weirdly. Like, they don't show nipples, ever, right? They show, like, bare butts sometimes, but even for something that that's, like, kind of the focus, Wait, they're it's on not a really, beach there's no and... sex. No, no, they're not on a nudist beach. The name of the group, the name of the rebel group is Nudist Beach. It's anime, whatever, you know? What's the show called? Kill the Kill. Kill to Kill? Kill la uh. Kill. Oh, kill it. It's nah. like super popular among anime circles right now. I wonder why. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. There's not. It's not like yeah. pornography okay. in the least. It's not even like. It's and weird. Either, uh, we should take a survey and see how many like thirteen to fourteen to fifteen yeah. year olds are jerking off to this. It's there's not it's, that it's much like to jerk off. To. Dead or alive that's isn't <laughs> pornography. Now, dead or alive, there's no point to dead or alive other than to be skimpy and do it. But it's a fighting game. The point is to play the fighting game. But there's also yeah. a lot of gratuitous sexualization. See, but that's gratuitous. There's no point to them being like wobbly wobble wobble wobble. wobble. Yeah. This is the physics engine. <laughs> did you did you hear by the way, here's a fun one. Um the new version of Dead or Alive that's coming out um has a boob physics option where you can select like normal, realistic, no jiggle at all, or DOA. DOA of course being the most extreme on the yeah. slider. <sighs> Love those games. Fucking unapologetically love Dead or Alive. And even, here's the thing, even if Dead or Alive were not all about gratuitous sexuality, which I'm all for, if it weren't that, I would still enjoy Dead or Alive as a fighting game. It's not as good as Virtua Fighter. Not by a long shot. Virtua Fighter is a fucking king. But it's not bad. I'll defend Dead or Alive. I'll say it. It's a good game. I can deny it. Good game series. Mm -hmm. My favorite part of Dead or Alive is volleyball. That's all I gotta say. No. Oh, not, well, even, not even because okay. of sexualization again. I like playing volleyball. See, but here the volleyball is okay. The wave race kind of rip off kind of sucks. Never played. 
oh no there's a wave race ripoff there's like this like butt battle game yeah. where you stand on a floating thing and have to like hit each other's butts together and dodge it's you know point. ass to ass kind of stuff <laughs> and you knock them off and then there's like gambling right the gambling is okay it's gambling you know how how fun is gambling gonna get i don't know I ask an addict Oh yeah. <laughs> now, if you're lo- if you're losing, and you're a gambler. Oh, I also watched uh, real quick, uh, Cowboy Bebop, which is way that, on the other end I, of sexualization. I, love, I watched that one too. And yeah. Evangelion, Evangelion, a little bit, a little bit, and of course Space Dandy, because that's the best anime to come out in like a decade. Okay. Space Dandy is the adventures of Zap Brannigan in space, basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No, but you you made a reference about gambling and ass an addict. Gambling. Ass an addict, if I can talk. Yeah. Uh, ass and ass dick. Yes. Ass the ass and addict. Um, if you, you're addicted if to If you ass have a gambling ass. problem, mm-hmm. is it a problem when you're losing or when you're winning? Because if you're like, if you're gambling all the time but you're always winning, is it a problem? Like, do we label mm-hmm. it as a problem? Well, if it's an addictive like, thing, like if you have not... a drug problem because you. <laughs> but if you're good at drugs, <laughs> no. What I'm saying is, if you're winning at meth, if you if you're doing drugs <laughs> and it's causing you to like tear apart your families, lose your friends, uh-huh. fuck up your job, it's a bad thing. But if you're like if you're doing meth and like your family loves you more on drugs, <laughs> I'm just saying hypothetically. Let's talk like, about the say, positives of meth. Not even meth. Let's just say weed. Say well, you're that's better barely... off. Doing one thing on a controlled substance versus not, is it really a problem at that point, or is it is it still considered a problem because you're addicted, or is it considered a problem well, if because of the if the, you're addicted to whatever it's a side problem. effects of said addiction? If you're addicted to whatever, it's an issue because if you're addicted, that means you're neglecting other important. Okay, things Okay, so what if you're life. addicted to being healthy? Is that a bad addiction? Yeah, because if all right, let's say if you're addicted, like actually addicted to being healthy. That means you're neglecting other stuff in your life. You're neglecting either your family or you're not working. What if you're not neglecting your family? What if you're getting them involved? Then you're probably not addicted. I don't know. Like, addicted means that's like... There's always a negative with addiction. That is, it's taking over your life. I mean, you're pushing other important things out of the way because that's so important to you now. You can't not do this, you know? What about your... What if you're addicted to living? What? (laughs) Fuck off! (laughs) You know who else? It's, <laughs> I can't even. Someone else segue into this one. I, exactly. I'm not sorry. You know who's not addicted to living? Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Hey. I don't know. Potentially the passengers of Flight 370. Uh, yep, I went there. Yeah. What do you guys think? I know I've paid almost no attention to this whole story. See, that's the good thing. If you pay attention, you know just as much as somebody who hasn't. <laughs> and that's a fact right now. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Here's in the break room at uh, the other place I'm working, they play CNN constantly, right? Yeah, me And too. it's been amazing I seeing know. the anchors just go like, it might have been ghosts. Like, they literally had the one day what? I come in and they're talking about all the, like, batshit crazy stories and they're like, maybe God took them. And I'm like, do you really have nothing to the point where you're, like, going on Did, this? Has anyone mentioned aliens yet? Yep. That was yeah. one of them. Oh. No, Aliens is the least crazy. I'm like, yeah, I actually come on hope now. it's. I like. I'm seriously like hoping. Please let it be Aliens. <laughs> please, please, please. Now, what if like what uh, if like 20 years from now we kind of just give up and this plane lands and like no one's aged a day? Like some sounds weird like a, 4400. That sounds like uh, a sci-fi TV yeah, show that's on one of those channels that do that. Siffy. One of the yeah, Siffy shows. Siffy no, what I'm saying is, like, what, what hypothetically, what if? That'd be pretty neat. That'd be pretty cool. I don't, I don't know what, what they, they say. Yeah. And they're like, what happened? We don't know. And they just Surprise! spit Because, you know, they're Malaysian. They're... That's your Malaysian accent? That's <laughs> all <laughs> oh, I got. Fair, I don't know what Malaysian sounds like. I don't know. I don't know what he really knows. I, I, I yeah, know. I'm, I'm assuming Asian. You're just going with generic, semi-racist Asian accent. <laughs> oh, but the calls. Me Malaysian. Me pay, play joke. Me go pee pee in your coke. What? That's Never not heard funny, that bro. That's no. not. No. It's me. Me Chinese. No, that's me, racist. Me joke. Me we, go we don't want that on the, on the podcast, bro. Oh, you were this close to saying it. Coat? What? Me go pee pee on your coat. 
That's, I'm starting a new. In. We're starting a new. Ra- your coat. It sounds like <laughs> that's something Malaysians do. We're starting new Chinese. racist stereotypes on the scat cast here. Yeah, yeah. I really uh, hope that's the case. No. <laughs> uh, you know what else you can put in the case? Pocket change. Yes. Okay, so that's <laughs> not anything to do with what I was talking about. Three. Okay. Uh, Fun fact. My favorite fact. two words in the universe. Fun and facts Because together. facts are always fun, and it's good to learn, kids. Stay in school. All right. If you collect all of the paper money in the United States and spread it evenly to every person, how much would they have? Two dollars. Mm, I would guess less than five. <sighs> 3500 mm. And you know why? Because mm. criminals and drug dealers keep their millions in paper dollars. So they make the scale way into like oh, the yeah. very few people have these millions and millions of paper dollars. And everybody else has like, you know, 5 or 10 or 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. That's what I got. That's pretty um, cool. <laughs> yeah. I recently read actually that... Now, I don't know how true this is. This is what I read on a, a Twitter... Well, that means it's false. Well, it's, Automatically it's, false. It's through Google Facts, so uh, I don't know okay. how accurate. Hey, man. And with those minor characters, you can't fit a lie. <laughs> oh, you can't you can. lie in 140. You need more space. <laughs> yeah. you know? What I'm saying is uh, the, the tweet said that I think it was 8% of all American currency is actually physical. The rest of it's digital, be it bank accounts. <laughs> it's all cards. Bitcoin. It's well, it's true. not American currency, though. Yeah. 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 It's absolutely true. Though. Yeah, I believe it. Because mm-hmm. everything's all a direct deposit or yeah, whatever. Credit and debt and that sort of thing. And yeah. actual, like, commodity money, which is, like, you know, gold that's worth money, but isn't actually money. Like yeah. Da Vinci paintings, that sort of thing. Do, uh, do you guys think, at this point, the checks are kind of archaic? Like, it's weird when you see someone use a check or you receive a check and you're like, a check... The like, only like thing, thing to you at this point? I still use checks hmm. once a month to pay rent. Yeah. Other than that, all my bills are paid to my bank account online, or I call by phone. Mm-hmm. Like I heard on the radio, matter of fact, something very uh, uh, similar to that: stamps. Like, who buys stamps anymore? Everything's done email, text messaging. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's all these things that we did. You know, if you if you go back 10, 15 years ago, book of stamps, writing checks. You know, I remember my mom sitting at the table filling yep. out half a dozen checks. Yeah, yeah. Stuff in envelopes, you know, mm-hmm. paying bills. But nowadays, it's like, when you see that, you're like, what, what? are you old? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, Well, that's the thing. Like, a lot of the jobs I worked in the past, the only people who you'd ever see using checks ever, ever, was uh, those who were elderly. And in most of the jobs I've worked, we didn't take checks anymore because there was more potential than bouncing or, you know, it wasn't like an instantaneous thing. Um, well, even yeah. places, like when I used to work at uh, Meyer, mm-hmm. um, you could write a check, but it would still scan the check and it would scan your routing number and your account number basically as if you were using it as a debit card. Huh. And they would actually scan the check because you could just hand them a blank check, they would scan it, it would print off on the back of the check saying this check is void, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And it would basically use it as a like a debit card transaction. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. So even though these old people were still writing checks, it was, wasn't was basically, it was basically they were using a debit card in paper form. Hmm. And it was, it's just one of those things where it's like, when you open a checking account, I mean, of course, I'm a younger generation. You open a checking account, you automatically get a debit card. Mm-hmm. Like, I just opened up two savings accounts for my kids, and they were like, you want debit cards for these? And I'm like, no. <laughs> that way they can buy Pokemon Like, I, I had to sign a form to tell them, no, I do not want debit cards. <laughs> <laughs> They're very young. They can't, what are they going to use them on? Where are they going to use them? <laughs> you know? Come home, Zeke's got like a whole room full of crap. <laughs> He just Not. orders crap from Amazon, like a bowl of crap. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of a... Uh, that website you could order poop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like horse manure. There was, um... I think it was a Cyanide and Happiness comic. Um, yeah, there was a Cyanide and Happiness comic recently where it was this guy and his significant other, and he was like, uh, what do you want for uh, dinner tonight? And she goes, I don't know, I feel like shit. 
And he goes, oh. And then it shows him walking into a restaurant called, like, Bob's House of Shit or something. Like that. Nice. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah. You know who else like ha- likes houses made of shit? The- Masochists. Yes. And you may have a house made of shit question in the would you rather question. The Fuck. The dirty with four R's. Uh... Or, or maybe we won't quite get to that yet. Uh, I, I guess. All right, let's, let's wait a second. Let's talk about other kind of shit. Let's talk about some other shit for a second. Uh, Fred know. Phelps died? Or is dead? He died. Okay. It's, it's really unfortunate. He was such a good Olympian. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then he smoked weed and did that Everybody subway hated. thing. and Yeah, too bad for him. It's too bad too for Fred bad, Phelps. Man. I mean, despite, he was a good swimmer. You know, his weed smoking, he was... Really, kind of. I mean, not saying that weed smoking is a very bad thing, mm-hmm. but it's unfortunate that you know. Yeah, it's too bad that Fred Phelps. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people thought he was going to lose his endorsements um, from the whole weed smoking did. scandal. Did he? I thought he, he was a good Olympic bit. swimmer. I remember Fred Phelps. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, he was kind of cocky. <laughs> I remember that one in the Beijing Olympics. He finished and he like showboated and splashed the other guy a lot. Mm-hmm. And then he said, take that, faggot! <laughs> I remember Fred Phelps caused a lot of controversy um, when he won the medal and then held up a sign that said, God hates fags. Yeah. And then I went to Subway the other day, and he was actually there doing some kind of weird like book signing or something like that. Mm-hmm. And... I, there's, Already then. There's no... <laughs> There's no way to say this in uh, appropriate wording, but he mm-hmm. may or may not have been executing a gay man by slow cutting. <laughs> right there in the middle of Subway. I was like, what are you doing, man? I'm He's like, eat, eat fresh, motherfucker. <laughs> slice, slice, slice. Yeah, and then you know? he put him in the oven, and it was actually a pretty good sandwich, but it was, it was, I felt uncomfortable, like eating, uh, uh, what's it like, the baby lambs. Veal. Veal, Veal, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like I'm like, ah, oh, man. Like you feel guilt, and then you're like, it's a pretty oh, good but sandwich. But it's so tender and juicy. <sighs> it's not like, bland. It's like, rustic. Yeah. <laughs> you it's show me not dry, but moist. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you show me Fred Phelps' corpse, and I'll show you my cock and ball. <laughs> so that's why I say it's unfortunate that he died because he really did cook a good gay man. <laughs> Alrighty then. That did not go as planned, but. <laughs> I like it. All I right. approve. So in serious terms, yeah, Fred Phelps was an asshole and he's dead now. The end. That's, that's basically what They didn't have a on. funeral because uh, they were afraid, ironically, that people would fuck with the funeral. So they didn't even bother. He's probably in an unmarked grave somewhere in a potter's field. <laughs> uh, good. Anything else to say about that? You covered it. Okay. <laughs> So, but I, I heard he does make a good gay sandwich. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, the gayest of sandwiches. We just painted the words. You're the one drawing the picture. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see. We can see. Very them. vague. <laughs> you should have been more explicit about it. I totally like the sandwich up. itself you know was gay somehow. I just realized I screwed up that quote like horribly bad. It's fine. Okay. You no screw up everything, it. and no one's listening. <laughs> Uh, I'm sad now. Hmm. I feel like answering a weird question. Do you now? I do. Well, I have weird questions here for you to answer. Oh, boy. Huh. Okay, say when. When. That's good enough right there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Would, by the way, this is a regular segment for those of you who are listening for the first time. If you are, welcome. Uh, would you rather... You made it this far. Congratulations! <laughs> you get a prize. Your full-fledged tank paratroopers. That's Ren and Stimpy. It's an old episode of Ren. Fuck. Alright. <clears throat> would you... It. Would you rather set off a mousetrap with your pennies or Can a bear... Penis? No, your pennies. is totally different. Would you rather set off a mousetrap with your penis or a bear trap with your leg. Well, for me, they're about the same size, so... <laughs> you do have pretty small legs, man. Oh, I got the baby legs. 
So let's go. Let's go around in a circle. Eric, uh, would you like oh, mouse now. trap dick or bear trap leg? Is the dick erect or not? That is the doesn't question. specify. If it does not specify, I think a limp dick would be able to withstand that. But it would. I've seen a lot of. It'd be it stretchy regardless. It would hurt, but it wouldn't. The penis be like is a very stretchy though. Or anything, whereas a bear yeah. trap. Bear trap would, yeah. Yeah. Well, I say traps all day, traps all night, traps can snap and rip and bite. You can set it and forget it, but I never let it get you in the arm. Oh, no, it happens on the go. Careful with that trap in tow. <laughs> I got that one. I, you I, got that one. I'm You're lost. not going to get that Ha-ha. one. You got that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Quick, you need to make another obscure reference so we can break the tie here. Oh, fuck. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. I came here to chew ball gum and kick ass and I'm all out of gum. Balls of oh, steel. Karate no. kid. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Mr. Miyagi said that. All right. I'll answer. Um, you bring up a good point with a penis erect or not erect thing. As usual, you I bring think, up that, that point. I think for argument's sake, we should say erect because Ooh. because your leg is solid. It's not like your leg can go flaccid. It's to be a fair fight. <laughs> Maybe your leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, good point. Um, I'll in say that erect, case, just for argument's sake. Okay, that is fair. Yeah, because if you're, you can break your penis, as you was shown by that one incident, many, like a couple many years incidents. ago, the where the guy incident. snapped his penis, incident just zero. like a celery stalk. Yeah. Are you talking about the, the, the video in the van? No. <laughs> there's, there's a video in the van, a video on the couch. <laughs> it's happened a lot, apparently. The archives. I don't go in the right parts of Reddit to see this. Uh, I, I saw it before Reddit, man. Fuck that. <laughs> You were on way before that, yeah. like efuck.com or whatever. You were on break.com. Road. You were on the message boards or something awful. I was in the dark internet. <laughs> on that one time jerking the dark off. Net. Yeah. I'm going to ask what happened. I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to say penis even if it's erect because you get a bear trap on your leg, that's going to ruin you for life. You get a really? mouse trap on your penis and you can maybe still be okay afterwards. It's not I'm gonna going to bear trap. it might be the other way around. Where no, man, get the guy, the guy who broke his penis. penis, you can you can get come back from that, man. Yeah, but dude, yeah, come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you can come it. on back from the that. amount of pain <laughs> in, in the penis. That's instant gut pain. Possibly, do you know? Pain. Have you ever snapped your penis? I'm just, I'm just, just thinking. To, where is it happening? It does, it just says on like, your like set I'm off a mousetrap. Middle okay, of shaft. if you no, if no, you set off a mousetrap with your penis, it's probably going to hit. Past the head, depending on your length, I guess. Past the head, it, like a little bit, like near the middle, probably. That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm saying, could this happen <laughs> in, in what the middle part of, of a the hospital? Because <laughs> if that's the case, it changes things. Because well. hospitals often have bear traps and mouse traps. <laughs> like, if you can choose where it happens, it could be a hospital down in Mexico. Let's, let's yeah. say it happens at your home, okay? Where you're likely to have, bear- and let's say if it's a bear trap, let's say most probably it's in the bear traps in the fucking woods. If it's a mouse trap, it's in your home because That's you have the mice. Mouse trap, you have better access to treatment. If you get caught with a bear trap in the woods, how long is it going to take you to get yeah. out? And the bear trap could be like posted on a chain or something, yeah. you know? Because if it's and a bear then, trap, you know, the wolves come in at night. Yep. Then they bite your dick off, anyways. <laughs> So it's a lose-lose. It's still You're like, at least I still have my dick. Oh, no! no. <laughs> I'm still going with bear trap. My I, dick's too sacred to me. I think yeah. I would go with mouse trap because I think that's easier to recover from. And plus, if you lose your dick, it's not the end of the world. If you lose your leg, that makes life it's, way more no, complicated. you lose your leg, <laughs> bitches at bars be like, oh, how'd you lose your leg? You'd be like, a bear. And trap? You say, no, you say trap <laughs> under your breath, real soft. You're like a bear trap, <laughs> or you or you fuck up and you're like a bear trap. <laughs> I think like I said the quiet part loud and the loud part quiet. And uh, the chicks are like, oh, that's that's hot. And then like <laughs> that's you, so you, hot, you're missing a leg. <laughs> no, that you you fucking took you're out a bear. You're asymmetrical now. <laughs> but, you took on bear and lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, because where's but, the bear? Yeah, that's and where you're you're like, you bitch. should see the other guy. I took the bear's leg. <laughs> I ripped it right off and beat him with it. Uh, like, I drank no, his blood. No, see, that's how I survived. You, you tell 
the lady that the bear's in your living room as a rug. And she's like, oh, you I should come see, see it. And also let me ejaculate on it. And then, you. look, you still have a fully functioning, <laughs> no mousetrap wound penis. But then you have to like, position yourself weird because you have half a leg. No, that's the great part. You can, like, maneuver better. Really? Really? Well, I'm going to take my leg off and prove you wrong. <laughs> Let's ask that one dude Next who's time on the Rouse Gallons Sketcast, Tone saws idea. his leg off live on the air. I have an idea. I'm not putting my dick in a mousetrap. I'll put his dick in a mousetrap. <laughs> but if you put your dick in a mousetrap. I'll position it on there. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's say you put your dick, dick in a mousetrap. Mouse and it snapped entirely in half. Like, total disconnect. <laughs> like, gone. Like, yeah. Like, like, sh- like Bob it. Could yeah, you yeah. not Bob say, fine. hey, Doc, give me a couple, you know, extra ten inches. <laughs> and and he's like, why not? Yeah, I but mean, then, your the, life then, is already fucked. But then Bob the it, length, no, no, Bob but, it. no, by doing that, though, then the length and the girth won't look right, and you just look all, like, Gumby. Hey, I mean, like, hey, I'm already and then a can. And then, <laughs> then a chick can. <laughs> Let, let us all remember, the Bobby guy went on to do pornos after his dick got severed. Y'all don't know if you never realized that. He got his penis severed off and then went on to do adult films with his reattached penis. He came out of it fine. He came out a winner, in fact. That's like, that's like, like you and know you how like, incest videos are always a step family? Tell me about it. That's like, necrophilia <laughs> is the only mostly dead <laughs> It's like, totally he gets a very specific type of woman who's interested in him, because it's like, I'm alive, but my dick is dead as a doornail. See, that's like... It's, it's all black and blue. Oh, it's like rotting. The new underground porno scene is going to be, they're going to kill somebody, and then do the whole uh, uh, Pulp Fiction, like a drown in the chest, they're going to defib <laughs> them, and then revive them, and they'll be really horny. And that'll be it. Like, tell me about your near-death experience. And then let me ram you in the ass. <laughs> Man, yeah. I saw I saw a video one time. It was part of like an Exorcist adult film. Yeah. And I was like trying. And I'm like, I don't know if I can get through this. Like, <laughs> this is not a good experience for me. I don't I don't even know if I can. It's so... Because she's throwing up and stuff. And I'm like... I'm the like, power of cock compels you. I think that was a line. Oh, I thought it was too joking. easy. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, ah... Like, then, I, it's creative, but... The finale like, included Pussy Zuzu, yes. <laughs> and it's just a one-frame shot. <laughs> with, like, with, like, like the ICP makeup. And pale and sick looking. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, on that note, we need to... Like the penis in the Exorcist video, we need to wrap it up. <laughs> uh so you guys, thank you for listening. Uh, if, if you made it this far. If you made it this far. Listen to other stuff. Maybe we'll get on iTunes someday or something. <laughs> In the meantime, you can check us out on YouTube at Rav Scoundrels Report. Check out Twitter, R underscore report. And you can email us at report at gmail.com or whatever. Yeah, just look us up on Facebook too. and you'll find it all. Or YouTube. Or just listen to this. Who cares? Look up reps. Uh, <clears throat> mm. Look, Look up, up reps. Gallons report on YouTube, and you'll find that video of the two like tween girls. <laughs> what? Oh, fuck! Yeah, we don't even come up like that. <laughs> oh, oh our rivals, our, our deadly rivals. rivals. <laughs> Those two tweens, <laughs> like Dante and Nero. Yeah. Hey, welcome to reps. Gallons report, man. Fuck you, you little bitch. Oh, starting an internet feud. Oh, no. What's the possibilities oh. of her listening to this? They, they have a lot more viewers than me. <laughs> Dude, they got two oh. episodes out. How many views do they have compared they, to the episodes what? that we have out? Let's this know. This is getting settled oh, right now. This Maybe feud, this beef is getting, getting settled. settled right now. If you can spell. Oh. <laughs> It's their own thing. You can spell it. Uh, Oh. Oh. We beat them out. Oh, we beat them off. We did it. Okay, they got four episodes out. Oh, shit. Their highest video is. (laughs) You lose other rap scallions reports. 41. We'll talk to you when you get sponsored by YouTube, motherfuckers. That video is still going to be more than this podcast gets. Oh. 
Well, all right, we said our things. Goodbye, everybody. Please listen some more. We'll it'll get better. <laughs> Back to the chamber. Back to the chamber of horrors. Do 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 do.